blessings. Yahweh bless you in this uh, beautiful Shabbat. We're here again. Um, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, um, as they say. Um, but we're here again for another Bible study. And I believe uh, I ran out of topics. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to go through the Yahweh text. I think um, I've been talking a lot about the documentary hypothesis and what it is. And um, for those who don't under, who don't know what the documentary hypothesis is, is the belief or the hypothesis, hypothesis or theory that the Old Testament and the New Testament um, that we were rather the Old Testament that we have at present is not the original form of um, the scriptures. Um, so this belief believes that there were at least four, depending on which um, which theory you go by, there are at least four traditions that produce um, just the first five books of the Bible and the rest of the Bible itself. The first um, tradition is the Yahweh, um, is the Yahweh tradition. The second is the El tradition. The third is the Deuteronomy tradition, and the fourth is the priestly source. Um, and so wanting to be a worshiper of Yah, I'm really interested in the Yahweh text. And so for the next few weeks, we're going to be examining the Yahweh text chapter by chapter. Um, now, one of the biggest oppositions to the um, to the documentary hypothesis is that, well, it hasn't been proven. Um, there is no actual text that says this is the Yahweh version or an actual text that says this is, this is what's in the Elohim version or the priestly version or the Deuteronomy version. Well, the Deuteronomy version is the whole book of Deuteronomy. And it's totally different from all the other books. But when you're reading the first five books of the Bible, even though, um, the stories seem coherent. If you start to look at the details, you notice the contradiction. So, um, and I'm just gonna, while I'm going through, I'm gonna um, point these out. And the purpose of this is not to shake your faith or make you doubt the scriptures or make you doubt Yahweh. It's so that you can get to the bottom of the truth. Um, in this whole process, I've heard of people who have gone to athe uh, atheism because of such contradictions. But uh, for me, it there was nothing like that. You know, I, I felt the need to find out what the original worship of Yahweh was. And so that was the purpose so that we can know what the original worshipers of Yahweh were, okay? So um, I'm gonna take you through the scripture. And um, where are we gonna go? Nobody knows. All right. So right off the bat, when you're starting from the beginning of the whole scriptures of the Old Testament, one of the things that you'll see, you may not have noticed it. Many of us have been in Christianity and Judaism for so long, and it's so entrenched and so instilled that we didn't notice. But Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 have two different creation stories. Let me repeat that. Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2 have two different creation stories. Now in Christianity and in Judaism, when you're talking about those first two chapters of the Bible, the explanation that they give is that um that um, chapter one is a general is a general text saying how the whole earth was created, and cha chapter two is talking about specifically Adam uh, and Eve and how man and woman was made. But there are some things that you, if you're not really looking for them, or if you're really looking at the at the text, you'll notice. For instance. Genesis chapter 1 says that the, the, the world was made in seven days. Genesis chapter 2 
says that the world was made in one day. So which one is it? Genesis chapter it, seven days or one day? That's what you call a contradiction. Okay. There's a lot of them. It's plenty of them. So the Yahweh's text, the well, okay, we'll go to the Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one originates from Babylon. It is the last creation story made. Uh, Genesis chapter one mirrors um, the Babylonian creation story, the Sumerian creation story. The only difference uh, with uh, Genesis chapter one and the Sumerian um, creation story is that there were gods involved. So, and then you, you, when you're looking, when you look at the Hebrew of Genesis chapter one, you can also see that there is this, it, it, it doesn't use the name Yahweh, it uses the name Elohim, which if you didn't know anything but Im at the end is plural. And a lot of people have, you know, come and they said, well, you know, it doesn't mean that it's necessarily plural. Yeah, it's a plural. Elohim is a plural um, noun, okay? And so um, it uses Elohim. Elohim is plural. So as we say in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth, but in the original text it says the gods made the heavens and the earth. Okay, so there's a coordinated effort by the gods. All right. Um, and one of the things that you'll notice about um, such text as let us make man, who is us? Well, if you understand that Elohim is a plural noun, you'll understand that it's not just one God, but it's plural gods that are creating. So us are the gods. Us are the gods, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people say, oh, it was the Trinity. Oh, it was God and the angels. It was Yahweh and the angels. If there's only one God, even if the Trinity is true, it's still supposed to be one. Why would he be talking to, can you imagine if I started talking to myself? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna eat something. Yeah, what you wanna eat? I don't know. <laughs> it, I just that it doesn't make sense, you know. Even if it was a trinity, you know, we believe that the, that the body is a trinity, right? Is the uh, the mind, the body, and the soul. But we still don't talk to ourselves. Like that's kind of intense. That's very intense, okay? Right? And so what we have to understand is that the earlier traditions were not monotheistic. The, the intention was not monotheism. What they did was they believed in many gods, but they focused their worship on one. And that's the same thing with, uh, well, it's not the same. Originally, it wasn't the same thing with Yahwehism. We're going to talk about the origin of Yahwehism and where it came from. But right now, let's, let's go back to Genesis 1 and 2. So Genesis 1 brings out that plurality of gods. And that this plurality of gods created the heavens and the earth. Okay. Well, when you go to chapter two, there's something totally different going on. And this is the beginning of the Yahweh text. How do you know? Because before in Genesis chapter one, and even when you go into Genesis chapter two, verses one, two, three, uh, I think it's up to chapter, um, up to verse three, um, it's, it says, and God, and Elohim, and Elohim. But when you get to verse 4, here it is. It says, when Yahweh Elohim made earth. Okay? So, we have to understand. So Yahweh, is one God. Yahweh is one God. Yahweh is one God. Okay. So let me, you have to understand here that a redaction took place. So they tried to take different texts and merge them and make them uh, coherent, make them into one story. The Yahweh text already had the name of Yahweh in it. But because chapter one says Elohim, Elohim was added to the second chapter. Okay, so now it says Yahweh. Elohim, okay? 
but originally it just said Yahweh. And so you have to be careful um, with with the text because there was a, a concerted effort to make everything read, you know, in a certain way. What they were trying to do was explain who is the Elohim in the first um, chapter. The Elohim in the first chapter is the Yahweh of the second chapter, okay? So, starting from uh, Genesis chapter 4, chapter 4, Genesis chapter 2, my bad. Genesis chapter 2, it says, when Yahweh made the heavens and the earth. Wait a minute, that's not where the, where the verse actually starts, right? There's more to it before that, right? Where's my bad? Where's my phone? Because my God was on my phone. Um, so, in our Bibles, it doesn't start off like that. It starts off saying, as soon as I can find my Bible app. It starts off saying, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created. In the day that Yahweh Elohim made the earth and the heavens. Oh, okay. All right. So what's with this whole introduction thing? Um, again, there was a, when the Torah or when the Pentateuch or when the first five books of the Bible was redacted, meaning that when it was put together, um, they wanted to make it look read like one document, not that it had been a separate document. And so they put that introduction so that you can so that a person can understand, just like Judaism Christianity understands, that this is a continuation or this is something specific coming from the first chapter. But in actuality, it wasn't specifically coming, it wasn't explaining the first chapter. This is a whole totally different. Okay. And so it starts off as saying, um, in the day Yahweh made the heavens and the earth and the heavens. Okay. Then verse five, there was no shrub of the field. So there's another thing. It says, uh, verse five, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For Yahweh Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground. So, and every plant of the field before it was on the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. So this is still a part of that introduction. For Yahweh Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So um, there was no man to, um, to work the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth, and uh, and watered the whole face of the ground. I'm reading the, the King James Version, y'all. Have mercy on me. Let me change the version. Let's make it a little bit different. Okay, before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown, for Yahweh Elohim had, had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to till the ground, but a mist went up from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. Okay, so what this is doing is, is trying to explain. Um, it's trying to explain the flood, okay? And so we know that that wasn't um, originally in the text. But verse 7 says, or the Yahweh text tells us um, that there were herbs, that there were no herbs in the field, no shrubs in the field, no herbs in the field, um, 
that Yahweh formed man out of the dust of the ground. So according to Genesis chapter 2, man was created first, then the garden was created. Do you get that? Verse 5 says, there was no herb of the field. There was no shrub or herb on the field, but, but Yahweh formed man of the dust. Then after man was created, in verse 8, Yahweh planted a garden. So according to Genesis chapter 2, man was created first. Then the garden was created. Then all the plants were made. Big contradiction from Genesis chapter 1 because it says that the herbs of the field were made first. Okay. So we did four, five, six, seven, and eight. Uh, verse eight, and Yahweh planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, when you look in Isaiah, Isaiah says that Eden was not only a garden, it was also a mountain. So you can see that ancient um mindset that the gods lived on the mountain. And so the mountain where Yahweh lived was Eden. And next to the mountain was the garden and man was in the garden. So man was living with or next to Yahweh. Okay. Um, verse nine, and out of the ground, Yahweh uh, made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now, um, again, Yahweh is making this, this garden. Verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there it was parted and became four heads. The name of the first is Pishon. That is, uh, that is it which surrounds the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Dilium and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is that is it that encompasses the whole land of Kush. Now, if you don't understand what Havila is, Havila is Arabia. And Kush is Africa. So there's a river that starts and it goes into Africa and it goes into Arabia. Okay. And then the third river is the Tigris. The fourth river is the Euphrates. So the Garden of Eden encompassed what, what was mostly the Middle East. Or where, where we have the Jordan, um, we have Israel, we have uh, Syria and all those things. It encompassed that whole plain. Okay. Um, verse 15, and Yahweh took the man and put him in the garden to dress it and to keep it. So man was created with a purpose to dress it and to keep it. Dress it means to um, make sure it functioned the way it was supposed to and to keep it meant to protect it. So the question is, what are what is man protecting the garden from? If there's no one else on earth, what was Adam protecting the garden from? How can he protect the garden if it was only herbs and animals? This is where a little explanation is needed. In the older tradition, they believed in many gods. That's what I'm going to stress that. They believed in many gods and worshipped only one. Okay? But they also believed that each god had a nation. Each God had a chosen lineage or a chosen people. 
For instance, Molech was the god of, um, I believe, the Edomites. Um, no, the Moabites. Uh, Moabite. The Moabites. So, um, in their creation story, Molech would have created whoever the um, the descendants of the Moabites were. Okay, and so the purpose of this is not to say, well, Yahweh created the heavens and the earth like like Christianity does or Judaism does, but is to say, well, this is the lineage of the people who worship Yahweh. That's the whole stress. That's what's trying to be stressed. Um, that's what the writers are trying to stress and uh, throughout this whole text, that Yahweh, that our ancestors, Adam, Eve, all of these people, they worship Yahweh. Okay, and there's a whole line. Okay, so um, going on, um, verse 16, and Yahweh commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may eat freely. Stop right there. Did Yahweh need to tell the man that he could eat? What was he supposed to do, star? We can see that, that Yahweh is giving that instruction. But this is an introduction to Genesis chapter 3, which is not in the Yahweh text. It's the priestly text. We'll talk about that um, later. So verse 16 and verse 17 are omitted from the Yahweh text. Verse 18 says, And Yahweh said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help me. And out of the ground, Yahweh formed every beast of the field. So now, now it's saying, first, the, the, the Genesis chapter 1 says, The herbs were made first, then the animals, then man. But Genesis chapter 2 is saying, that man 